Hello and welcome to the webinar. I'm Ann Gage of Confident Horsemanship and I'm really excited to be here and have this opportunity to share this information with you. It would be great if you would introduce yourself on the comments. Just share your name and where you're from if you could. And if you have any questions as we go through this session, then please just post them in the comments as well and I'll answer them at the end. I love this quote from Bill Cosby. In order to succeed, your desire for success must be greater than your fear of failure. And what that means to me is that when you have a clear vision for working through your fear, you'll have the motivation to do whatever it takes to get to the other side. This was certainly true for me when I lost my confidence after getting bucked off one of my own young horses several years ago. And it's true for you as well. So congratulations for taking this step and for participating in this webinar. So before we get started, for those of you who don't know me, I created Confident Horsemanship because I'm passionate about helping horse lovers achieve confidence, enjoyment, and a willing partnership with their horses. I have more than 25 years experience training horses, coaching riders, breeding, and showing. I'm a clinician, a riding coach, a trainer, and a certified professional coach with certifications from Chris Irwin and Daniel Stewart. I've also studied the work of Linda Tellington-Jones, who you may be familiar with through T-Touch and the Tele Tellington Equine Awareness Method, also known as TEAM. And with my varied background and my own experiences, I now focus on the mental and physical aspects of both you and your horse so you can develop trust and respect while building confidence in each other. I build a solid foundation from the ground and in the saddle. I'm the author of the book Confident Rider, Confident Horse and a regular contributor to Horse Canada magazine and to the English Rider newspaper. And most importantly, I've been where you are. And here's my story. Several years ago, I was bucked off my young warm blood gelding. I was in my 40s at the time, and I just didn't bounce as well as I did when I was younger. Now, other than some bruises, I wasn't actually physically hurt, but my confidence was completely shattered. At the time, I was a full-time coach and trainer, and I didn't see the buck coming. So I completely lost trust in myself as well as in my horse. The real problem was that lack of confidence transferred to every horse. If I couldn't predict and prevent the behavior in my own horse, how would I see it in any other horse? So I really doubted myself as a rider, as a trainer, and as a coach, because I believe a good coach should be able to get on her student's horse to show the student what to do and to work through training issues that are beyond the student's skill level. So my fear was so bad that I would get nauseous and shaky at the mere thought of getting on a horse, any horse, even one that I knew well and trusted. So I had a choice to make. I had to find a new career or find a way to rebuild my confidence. I couldn't imagine doing anything else for a living, so I had to rebuild my confidence. So my journey began, and now I teach what I've learned to other horse lovers just like you. So in this webinar, we're going to look at the mental side of building your confidence. When it comes to rebuilding or building your confidence, there is no magic wand or a quick fix. It takes time, it takes work, and it takes commitment. If you start using these three techniques that I'll be sharing with you tonight, you'll notice an improvement in your confidence almost right away. At least a little bit. I know because these are three of the techniques I've used on my personal journey to rebuild my shattered confidence. So there are three areas I focus on when I'm building confidence with my students. Your position and balance in the saddle, which is also known as your seat, understanding what your horse needs from you, and the mental game. And that's what I'm focusing on tonight. What I'm going to share with you today are three techniques you can start using right away that will help improve your confidence. So who's this webinar for? It's for you if you're brand new to horses and would like to understand them better so you don't feel so nervous around them. 
it's for you if you're an experienced rider but you feel that your fear, self-doubt, or lack of confidence is really holding you back and you're not progressing as much as you think you should. It's for you if you're a pleasure rider who only rides when conditions are perfect or has stopped riding because it's just not fun anymore. It's for you if you're a competitive rider but your show nerves are affecting your performance and your enjoyment. And it's for you if your dream is to have a true connection, a real partnership with your horse, but right now it's more of a nightmare. So as I've already said, there's no magic wand that I can wave that will give you immediate confidence. But I can promise that the three powerful techniques I'm about to share with you, if you put them into practice, you can start reducing self-doubt, fear, and stress right away. Change what you're doing and you change your outcome. So this is a free webinar that's being sponsored by my new program, my new home study course, Build Your Confidence with Horses and Riding by Winning the Mental Game. And I want to challenge you right now at the beginning of this webinar that once I show you how to use these three confidence building techniques and what you can get out of them, I'm challenging you to come up with a good reason not to enroll in this course while you're on this webinar. I want you to be able to do what I and many of my students have done. Build your confidence, eliminate self-doubt and fear, and develop the partnership you and your horse desire and deserve. That means there's going to be an offer at the end of this webinar. It, only, it will only come after I've delivered on this usable information. So lean in, get ready to take some good notes. Turn off your email, put your phone on silence, and log out of Facebook. No multitasking. I want you to get as much as possible out of this session. So here we go with confidence tip number one. That is, change how you breathe. Your breathing affects how you feel and how you feel affects your breathing. It's a vicious circle. When you're feeling stress, nervousness, or fear, your body and mind have gone into fight or flight mode which is an automatic and unconscious response triggered by your brain. You can't help it. One symptom of fight and flight is rapid short breathing or even holding your breath. But by changing how you're breathing, you can override and stop that automatic response, gain control of your mind and your body, and feel more calm within a matter of minutes. And have you ever noticed that some of the other physical symptoms of fear are very similar to those of excitement. The difference is that fear is excitement without the breath. So let's consider some of the physical symptoms that happen when you're fearful versus when you're calm. See if you recognize any of these physical symptoms of fear, stress, or anxiety. Maybe you hold your breath or you breathe with rapid shallow breaths or maybe you start to breathe through your mouth your heart rate will increase as adrenaline courses through your body your muscles become tense and you may even feel shaky or tremble now compare these to what's going on when you feel calm when you're calm you're breathing from your diaphragm you tend to breathe more deeply and it's more rhythmical. You tend to breathe through your nose. You may breathe out through your mouth, but you'll inhale through your nose. Your heart rate is slower and there's little or no adrenaline in your system. And your muscles and joints are supple and relaxed. And when you're in that state, it's much easier to be in sync with your horse when you're riding. So you can change your breathing and change your physiological responses. So you can go from all that fear, anxiety feeling into that calm feeling by taking a few minutes to do a calm, focused breath. And I want to take you through that exercise. So this is something you can do when you're working with your horse on the ground or when you're riding. So I'm going to explain this to you assuming that you're sitting watching this uh, video. 
So I'd like you to sit up tall in your chair with your feet flat on the ground and your back straight and your chest open. Now if you were on your horse, you would sit the same way. You would feel your stirrups under your feet without pressing too hard in them. You would feel your seat bones in your saddle. Now put your left hand on your belly just at your navel and your right hand on your chest. And now focus on your breath. And I want you to count to five slowly as you inhale, feeling your diaphragm expand under your left hand, and then your chest lifts slightly under your right hand. And hold your breath for a count of three. Then exhale slowly for a count of five. And feel your chest drop and your tummy deflate, moving back towards your spine. Now you may notice after a few breaths like that that your heart pumps a bit more to start with as it adjusts to this new way of breathing and you're taking in more oxygen. So that will soon pass and you'll feel more calm and relaxed. Repeat this breath several more times. Inhaling for a count of five, four, three, two, one. Holding for a count of three, two, one, and exhaling for a count of five, four, three, two, one. And feeling the movement of your tummy expanding on the inhale and deflating on the exhale. Practice this calm, focused breathing as often as you can throughout your day. Anytime you feel stressed or anxious, take a few slow, calm, focused breaths and notice how quickly you calm down. So you could be doing this while you're stuck in traffic, when your kids are getting on your nerves, whatever is causing you stress. The more you practice, the more natural it will feel. So make sure you do practice it when you're not feeling stressed so that it becomes more automatic and comfortable for you. So tip number two is another fairly simple one. Change your posture because your posture reflects your emotional state. Tension in your mind becomes stiffness, tension, and imbalance in your body. Now we all have patterns of stiffness in places where we automatically hold tension in our bodies. Do you know where you hold your tension? Is it in your hips, your shoulders, your neck, your lower back? Maybe it's in your jaw. When you hold that tension in your body when you're sitting on your horse, of course it affects your horse and he reacts to that. Now you may not even be aware of the tension you're carrying in your body because you've become so acclimatized to it that it feels normal. It's just there all the time. And you can't change what you're not aware of. So when you change your body posture, you can have a significant effect on how you feel mentally and emotionally. And you can help and it can help you feel more confident within a matter of minutes. So Richard Petty is a professor of psychology at Ohio State University and he says that results show how our body posture can affect not only what others think about us but also how we think about ourselves and that affects what's going on in your head, those thoughts that go on in your head. He also said that most of us were taught that sitting up straight gives a good impression to other people but it turns out that our posture can also affect how we think about ourselves. If you sit up straight, you end up convincing yourself by the posture you're in. And Amy Cuddy has a great TED Talk video on YouTube. You can just Google her and, and it'll come up. It's about the she talks about the effect body language and posture has on how you feel. And she talks about taking a power pose. And if you take that pose for only two minutes, it can significantly change how you feel. I like to call this the Wonder Woman pose, but I'm probably dating myself with that one. So here's our Wonder Woman. Now, you can do this pose again whether you're sitting or so in your saddle on your horse or whether you're standing, so if you're working on the ground with your horse or grooming your horse. And immediately start to change or within a couple of minutes start to change how you're feeling. You'll feel more empowered. So let's practice this. While you're sitting, feel your weight evenly on your seat bones. And this is what you would do also if you were sitting in the saddle on your horse. And if you're standing, you would 
feel your weight evenly on both feet with your weight just behind the balls of your feet. You don't want to be tipping forward into your toes or leaning back into your heels because that makes you off balance. And even if you don't recognize you're off balance, your brain does. And your brain doesn't like it when you're not balanced. It will start to get a little stressed um, and start to trigger that uh, the stress response. And it's also actually the same for horses. They don't like to be unbalanced either. So anyway, sitting in your chair, just feel your seat bones, have your weight evenly balanced over them. Now lift and open your chest. Just take a nice big inhale from your diaphragm like we did in the breathing exercise. And move your shoulder blades closer towards each other and then drop them down your back. Let your shoulders just drop away from your ears. Now lift your chin so it's parallel to the floor and be careful that you're not being stiff as you go into this posture. You want to be nice and soft and supple in your body while you're holding the posture. So engage your core to support your torso and so that you don't strain your back. And then smile, a great big smile so that your eyes crinkle. And for even more power, put your hands on your hips or give a thumbs up sign. Now hold that for two minutes and keep breathing nice and deeply and rhythmically and you actually change your physiology. You'll feel stronger and more empowered. It's another really quick technique when you start to feel a little nervous or scared. And our third tip for tonight is another easy, well simple, I wouldn't say they're easy, but these are definitely simple, is to change your expectations. So have you ever said to someone else or even to yourself, I should be better than this. Oh, I should be better than her. I should be able to do this because I used to be able to do it or something along those lines. When you use I should, then you end up feeling like a failure because that's really a disguise for a self-defeating mantra that whispers quietly, I'm not good enough. The reality is that you are where you are. Accept that. Stop comparing yourself to where you used to be when you were younger, before you were injured or with that other horse or whatever it is in your case. And definitely stop comparing yourself to other people. You are where you are. Accept that and take the pressure off yourself. And what are you basing your opinion that you should be on anyway? Who are you comparing yourself to? There are so many factors that come into play when it comes to riding. Your results, where you are now, come not only from your physical ability, your level of competency, and your confidence level, but also from your horse's ability his level of training and his level of confidence. So avoid focusing on what you think you should be doing or should be able to do and accept where you are and know that may change from day to day. When you choose to focus on that, you empower yourself. So I can hear you saying expectations are necessary. We need them to achieve anything. And if you believe you need high expectations to achieve, high, to make high achievements, I'm going to give you another thought. According to sports psychologist Dr. Patrick Cohn, expectations are unwritten rules you set for yourself. You might call them personal standards, you might call them personal demands, but they're rules and you either achieve them or you don't. So you set up a success-failure scenario. It's black and white. There's no in-between. If you don't achieve them, that negatively impacts your confidence and, um, and, and you start to feel bad, like you're never going to make progress. So you know you've set an expectation when you're using statements that include Phrases like, I should be, or I must be, or I shouldn't be. 
When you're saying, even to yourself, statements that include I should be, you end up feeling like a failure. Most people get discouraged when they feel they aren't making progress at the rate they should or that they aren't as good as her or him or them. We're certainly masters at comparing ourselves to others. And when you think in this way, you put unnecessary and unhelpful pressure on yourself that eats away at your confidence. You become frustrated with yourself, maybe with your coach, and even with your horse. Your confidence and your performance are negatively affected. So, what do you do instead of setting expectations? You set goals. Goals are simply objectives that you set for yourself. They're stepping stones you, stri you strive to achieve one at a time. They can be small goals that lead you baby step by baby step to a larger goal. So you set a small goal, you achieve that, and you set another goal. By setting goals, you put the focus on problem solving in a positive way, and you learn. You set goals by asking yourself questions like, how will I achieve it? What resources do I need to achieve it? And then when you successfully complete a goal, you feel good. And that builds your confidence and your performance improves as well because you're developing better skills one step at a time. So replace those strict expectations, those personal demands, with small manageable objectives or goals and you'll start to build your confidence. Now, I've been teaching these techniques to my students for several years, and this is only a small slice of the steps that you need to take to build your confidence. If you stick through till the end of this seminar, I'm going to reveal an additional, a bonus tip for you. Now, here's one of my students I've worked with, with her thoroughbred gelding, Henry. Pia was has ridden since she was a young child in Germany, but she lost her confidence at, as an adult after one of her horses developed a habit of rearing when going out on the trails. When she bought Henry, who's a young off-the-track thoroughbred, he needed a confident rider to perform at his best. And so when, she, when Pia struggled with her confidence, Henry also struggled with his confidence and things would go wrong. But after working through some of these mental tips, there's now no more excuses. Pia and Henry enjoy their rides together, whether they're in the arena or on the trails. And what I'm offering, introducing tonight, is a Confident Horsemanship Home Study five-week online course to help you build your confidence with horses and with riding. Worry is your thoughts not serving you well. You'll eliminate self-doubt, build self-confidence, and de decrease anxiety when you know how to manage your thoughts. And that's what this program is about. So it's for you. If you believe you can't improve your skills, if you've always been afraid of horses or are new to horses and feel unsure around them, if you've been injured or frightened on the ground or in the saddle, if you overanalyze your riding to the point of paralyzing yourself, you know, that tendency that adults have to overthink things. If you suffer from perfectionism, so you or your horse or your riding are just never good enough. If you can't do it perfectly, it's not worth doing, in your mind anyway. Or maybe you're a natural worrier and often feel anxious even in other areas of your life. This program is definitely not offering to wave a magic wand or promising to give you a quick fix. I have practiced these techniques and I continue to use them in many areas of my life and I've been teaching them to my clients for almost 10 years. What I can promise you is that they work as long as you're, you do the work. So this is another client, Allison. She rode as a teenager and then had a few years off when she got married and had a child. And when her daughter started school, Allison bought her own horse and kept her at home at her own farm. 
but she was suddenly surprised to find that the confidence she'd had when she wrote as a teenager was gone. Writing as an adult with family, financial, and career responsibilities changes things. Once Allison was able to change her mindset, manage her mindset, and understand her horse better, their partnership significantly improved. This five-week online course is your next success step for building your confidence. You'll learn how to improve your riding and your partnership with your horse by managing your mindset. You'll receive an email every week for five weeks with a link to a video seminar that you can watch whenever it's most convenient for you. You'll also receive the seminar in audio format so that you can download it and take it with you to listen to while you're driving, while you're at the barn, or when you're doing chores. You'll also receive worksheets and supporting documents in PDF format with each lesson. If you have questions or need additional support, you can send your questions to me by email once a week. If you want more support, you can join a, Facebook, a private Facebook group to share your experiences, get support, and get your questions answered. And as an additional bonus, the first 10 people to register for this course will receive a free phone coaching session with me. We can do it by phone, by Skype, or Google. This one-hour session is valued at $55, but it's yours for free when you register for this course. In the first module, you'll learn how to understand your fear and how to develop courage. In module two, we'll look at ways to stop being reactive to get you out of fight or flight mode and how to become proactive so that you regain a sense of control. In the third module, you'll learn ways to safely expand your comfort zone as well as your horses so that you aren't overwhelmed. In module four, you'll learn how to let go of those unrealistic expectations stop being so hard on yourself, and set SMART goals so that you can develop your skills and your confidence. And in the last module, you'll take a look at what your horse needs from you to build trust, because you need to trust each other in order to have a strong, healthy partnership and confidence. So what's your lack of confidence costing you? Are you like Dorothy? who said it impedes my ability to establish a genuinely trusting relationship with my horse and holds back my development as a rider? Or maybe you're like Kathy who said, I can't ride as much or enjoy myself while I'm riding. Or maybe you can relate to Christine who says, I don't go out and enjoy nature since I won't ride in open fields, along trails, or through the forest because I'm just too scared of my horse's reaction. Or maybe you're like Elizabeth, who said, My lack of confidence affects my horse's behavior towards me, and that affects my ability to trust my horse. So how would it feel if you could move forward from where you are now? If every day you could take even a baby step towards having the trusting partnership you want with your horse? Action increases self-confidence, and that creates courage. So each video lesson in this course is between 35 and 45 minutes in length. Plus you get the audio files, worksheets, and other supporting PDF files with each of the five lessons. You get email support, you get access to the private Facebook group, and the first 10 people who sign up also get the free coaching call. But don't go by the price you see on the screen because you're getting a deal today just for attending this webinar. Your total investment for registering today, including all the bonuses, is just one payment of $127. Or, if that's a little out of your budget, you can pay two monthly payments of $67. You'll get the first video the Monday after you register, and an additional video each following Monday. You'll see the link in the description box below this video. 
I won't think you're rude if you type the link into your browser right now and start coming on board. Actually, I'd really appreciate it if some of you would click on that link and let me know if it's working. Now here's another client, Jackie, with her quarter horse gelding stitch. Jackie had totally lost her confidence and had stopped riding altogether. This was due to a combination of the stresses in her work and home life and an injury when she came off her horse in a riding lesson with a previous instructor. But now, after learning these techniques, Jackie enjoys riding stitch whenever her busy schedule allows. She uses these techniques, the same ones I'll be teaching you. After the first offering of this program, 100% of the surveyed participants stated that they would recommend this program to others. And here's some of the things they had to say. They appreciated the great tools that they were able to work with. That their confidence grew and they really liked the way that the course focuses on both sides of the horse rider relationship. And as promised, since you've stuck in till the end, I'm giving you a bonus tip. Change your mind. Because your thoughts set the directions of your feelings. Your feelings affect your actions or inactions, and those actions or inactions affect how you feel physically, emotionally, and mentally, and that all affects your results. Only when you change what you're focusing your thoughts on can you change how you feel and what you do. You give your brain the job of figuring out how to get the result you want rather than focusing on what could go wrong. You know those nasty little what-ifs? Because when you focus on what can go wrong, you trigger your fight or flight system. Your brain doesn't know whether it's a real or an imagined thing that's going on in your brain, in your head. Dr. Jim Lair is a world-renowned performance psychologist and co-founder of the Human Performance Institute. He's worked with hundreds of world-class performers, including elite tennis athletes like Monica Seles and Martina Navratilova. He studied what they do in the 20-second break between points and discovered that mediocre players do something different to champion players. The mediocre players take that 20 second break and scold themselves for mistakes they made in the game. They focus on what went wrong. While the champion players use that same 20 second break to focus and prepare their minds for the next point in the game. They focus on what they want to have happen and how to make it happen. So in the five-week home study course, you'll, you'll learn techniques that will help you think more like the champion players and be able to stop focusing on what could go wrong and focus on what could go right instead. You'll make a plan. You'll set goals that help you grow. You'll learn how to control those nasty little what-ifs that circle around in your brain. You'll learn how to manage the physical symptoms of fear, stress, and anxiety. So let's just do a quick review of the four tips we've covered tonight. Tip number one, changing your breath slows or stops the flow of adrenaline. Tip number two, changing your posture makes you feel more powerful. Tip number three, changing your expectations for goals helps you build your skill level, performance, and confidence one baby step at a time. And the bonus tip, Changing your mind, put your focus on what you want to have happen and how to make it happen. Practicing each of these techniques can help you manage your fear by changing your physiology and your state of mind. So how strong is your desire to build your self-confidence, get past your fear, and build the mutually trusting partnership with your horse that you both deserve? The tips I've shared with you today are a good start. So take those and start implementing them right away. You may find it difficult at first, but when you do it often, it becomes second nature. 
I've been studying, practicing, and teaching confidence building techniques for almost 10 years. By working with me, you'll learn more techniques and get the support you need to help you build your confidence and improve your partnership with your horse more quickly than doing it on your own. And you're not alone. I'll support you and celebrate your successes with you all along your journey. And in the meantime, enjoy your journey.